Hi, welcome to a new video. Today I'm not on my yoga mat as usual. In this video I will talk a bit about my yoga journey, how I started practicing yoga and I will answer some of your questions. Let's get started with introduction. My name is Uliana. If you don't know how to pronounce it, you can think of the name Juliana or Juliana. I think these two names are a bit more popular around the world. And then from Juliana, just remove the first letter and you have Uliana. <laughs> pretty easy. <laughs> Uliana is a pretty common name in Ukraine where I'm from. So this is Ukrainian accent if you were wondering. But currently I live in Germany. This takes me to the first question about languages. Someone asked how many languages I speak and which one was the easiest and hardest to learn. Um, I speak four languages and I'm learning two more now. Ukrainian is my mother tongue, so that one was the easiest one to learn. Russian was also pretty easy. I actually never learned it officially, like in school. But when you live in Ukraine, you hear Russian all the time on TV, on radio. Some people prefer to speak Russian instead of Ukrainian, so that's how I learned, just from listening. My writing is not very good, but I can speak and understand Russian well. Then in school my first language was German, and then a couple of years later I started learning English as well. I always found English harder than German, maybe because I started learning it later, but maybe because of pronunciation. In English there are so many sounds that just don't come naturally to me. I always need to put a lot of effort to pronounce the words correctly so that people can understand me. And it still doesn't always work, but I'm trying my best. <laughs> and um, two more languages I'm learning now is um, French and Hindi. French is not too difficult, I think. It's a similar language to other European languages. Like it has a similar grammar structure and many words are similar to English, which makes it a bit easier to learn. And Hindi is definitely the hardest language for me. <laughs> I've been learning it for a few years now and I feel like I'm just stuck at the same level. I'm learning Hindi because my husband is Indian and we used to travel to India pretty often before pandemic. I always found it very useful to know at least basic Hindi so I can understand what people are saying around me and I can talk or ask questions without asking someone to translate for me all the time. But as I said, it's not easy. For some reason it's also this language just doesn't feel easy for me to learn. I need to put a lot more effort, I think, to improve to the next level. Next question. How and when did you start practicing yoga? For me, practicing yoga was kind of a conscious decision. Um, four years ago, I decided that it was finally time to make some lifestyle changes and develop some good habits that could help me to live a healthy, long life. Up until that point, I was not very physically active. I didn't exercise at all. <laughs> I think it all started in childhood. When I was 11 or 12, I was diagnosed with scoliosis and the doctor told my mother that I shouldn't do jumping, running, some sports that could potentially be harmful for the spine and make scoliosis worse. And even in physical education classes in school, I was allowed to skip many activities while other children were playing around, I was just sitting there on the bench. All this made me pretty lazy by the time I grew up. I didn't really develop love for sports or like physical activities. I tried to start exercising as an adult because I knew it was important. I tried running, but I didn't enjoy it. I went to the gym, but I really hated <laughs> gym. So yoga was something I wanted to try for a long time, especially because of all the mental benefits that people talk about. I heard from many people how yoga changed their life and I was very curious, like, it looks like you are just doing some exercises on your mat. How can it change your life? I was curious about that. I wanted to try yoga, but for some reason I just thought that the only correct way to learn yoga is to go to in-person classes in studio and that's something I couldn't do for some time because I was living in a small place where there were not many yoga classes or they didn't work with my work schedule. 
Money was also an issue because I was not earning so much, so I wasn't even sure if I could afford going to classes regularly. It went on for some time until that point four years ago when I changed the jobs from kind of an active job in hostel where I used to walk around during my shift and move around a lot. I changed the job and started working from home, sitting at computer all day and I started having back pain. <laughs> so that was like a last drop. I knew I had to do something. I had to stop making all these excuses. So that's when I went to YouTube, typed yoga for beginners in search, opened the first video and just started practicing at home. I didn't even have a yoga mat at that time. I actually didn't have a yoga mat for maybe like six months because I didn't realize it was an important part of equipment. I just put a towel on the carpet and it was okay. And I just kept practicing at home for a very long time until I moved to Germany second time. That's when I uh, found a nice studio next to my house and I started taking in-person classes as well. Then later in 2019, I took a yoga teacher training to become a teacher. Next question, how did yoga change your life? I always find change like a very strong word. It's not like my word, world turned upside down when I started practicing yoga, but it improved in many, many ways. First of all, obvious physical changes. I became stronger and more flexible. Uh, when I started yoga, as I didn't have any other exercise experience, I was not flexible just like a, an average person who never stretched before, but this didn't bother me so much. What was really hard for me were all the poses that required strength. I was very weak. I couldn't hold plank or downward facing dog for more than a few seconds. My balance was horrible. So all these positions were really challenging for me, but also fun at the same time. So. Yoga was exactly what I needed at the right time. It was the right kind of challenge and the right kind of fun. Um, this time my strengths improved and I noticed how it, it really helped me in everyday life. I stopped having back pain. I noticed that my posture got much better because I had <laughs> zero core strength before and now I had the strength to keep myself in good posture for the most part of my day at least. Sitting at computer got easier, walking around, standing, many like everyday moves just felt so much easier and effortless. And then of course other mental changes. These are the things that I kind of find hard to explain in English, in English because it's not something you can touch or see. But I think my mindset changed a lot after I started practicing yoga especially when I started reading about philosophy behind yoga, about the origins of yoga. One more thing that I feel uh, yoga really helped me with is to develop a better relationship with food. I've always been a very emotional eater. I used to eat when I had stress, when I was sad. With yoga, as you practice this mindfulness on the mat, it usually translates in your daily life and you start being more mindful about the decisions you make, about the choices you make. That's what happened for me with food. I started to be much more mindful about what I eat, how much I eat. My weight finally stabil stabilized. I lost a few kilograms and it's just stayed stable without worrying too much about food because I was like able to, to feel better if I'm hungry, if I should eat or not and stuff like that. I think I should have prepared better for this question because there are other small changes that I noticed in myself when I started practicing yoga. I just don't know how to explain it well. Maybe I will do it in the next video. But let's take the last question about scoliosis. What has helped me with scoliosis and I guess how yoga can help too. When I was diagnosed with scoliosis, I was still growing. I was 11 or 12, if I remember it right. So the doctor told me to go to physical therapy to try to improve this scoliosis curve. It helped. By the time I stopped growing, my scoliosis got better and 
I still ha have it, you can see it if you know what you're looking for, like one of the shoulders is a bit higher and you can see it on the waist that it's not even, but it doesn't give me any pain. So with yoga, there are so many opinions what you should or shouldn't do if you have scoliosis. In the end, it's up to you to decide who you want to believe and what you want to do. There are teachers who say you shouldn't do certain poses or you shouldn't practice certain styles of yoga if you have scoliosis. The others say you can do everything, just be mindful about what you're doing and how it is feeling in your body. I like the second approach a bit more. I do everything that feels good in my body. I'm very careful with deep back bends because I noticed it's something that doesn't feel right on my lower back. That's when I have this scoliosis curl. Um, and once Things that I already mentioned is that yoga helped me to improve my posture. I think it's very important with scoliosis that you try to keep your posture neutral as much as you can. And apart from strengthening the core and back muscles, you also develop some awareness, better awareness of your body, where your body is in space. You start noticing it just better what you feel, how it feels, how different positions affect your body. I think that was really valuable for me to learn. So I have many uh, many videos yoga for posture. I think they are in general good for scoliosis because they are focused on improving strength in core and uh, opening the shoulders. So you can keep them back and down. There are also teachers who do yoga for scoliosis specifically. They can develop a program that is specific specifically for your curve, depending on which shape it is and where it is on your spine. I will link some teachers in the, in the description because I don't really do it, I just do a very general yoga practice. But if your goal is to improve um, your curve in the way it looks or um, the way it feels, then maybe it's better to do specifically yoga for scoliosis for your specific type of scoliosis. Okay, that's it for today. Uh, let me know in the comments if you have any other questions so I can make part two. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.